the judge overseeing Paul Manafort's case recently angered the left by going against Mueller's recommendation and handing down a lenient sentence. CNN reported that Manafort learned on Thursday that he will serve almost four years in prison, far short of what had been expected and recommended, for financial fraud convictions obtained by special counsel Robert Mueller as he investigated Manafort's alleged collusion with the Russian government in 2016. The crimes, though serious among white-collar offenses, did not relate directly to Manafort's work as Trump's 2016 campaign chairman. Manafort spoke to the judge before his sentencing and thanked him for a fair trial and asked the court for compassion. Humiliated and shamed would be a gross understatement, Manafort said, expressing how difficult the past two years have been for he and his family. Back in 2018, Judge T.S. Ellis told prosecutors, you don't really care about Mr. Manafort's bank fraud, what you really care about is what information Mr. Manafort could give you that would reflect on Mr. Trump or lead to his prosecution or impeachment. Former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort was sentenced to nearly four years in prison on Thursday for concealing millions of dollars he earned overseas. The surprisingly light sentence of 47 months is likely to see Manafort, who is 69 years old, released in about three years or less, as it includes nine months of time served. It fell well short of federal sentencing guidelines. It represented an implicit rebuke to special counsel Robert Mueller, whose prosecutors had called for 19 to 24 years, a range that would probably have led to the longtime GOP consultant dying in jail. Manafort does, however, still face sentencing in a separate case. Ellis told Manafort that he stood convicted of very serious crimes. Seemingly preparing for critiques of the unexpectedly lighter sentence, Ellis said, I think what I've done is sufficiently punitive, and anyone who disagrees should try spending a day in a federal penitentiary. And he's spending 47 months. Manafort was found guilty last year of five tax fraud charges, two bank fraud charges, and one charge of hiding foreign bank accounts. The charges were brought against him by special counsel Robert Mueller who uncovered evidence of the violations as part of his sweeping investigation into President Trump's alleged collusion with Russia to win the 2016 election. Mueller's office has spent weeks arguing against leniency for Manafort in sentencing memo filings. Mueller's office said Manafort had shown a lack of remorse and said Manafort blames everyone from the special counsel's office to his Ukrainian clients for his own criminal choices. In court, prosecutors continued to insist that Mr. Manafort did not provide sufficient cooperation to merit any mitigation. And they reminded the judge that no one conjured these crimes up and that a jury of his peers found him guilty. Mr. Manafort fails to accept responsibility and he remains unremorseful, prosecutors said. Mueller's office had recommended a sentence ranging from 19 to 24 years in prison. When arguing for this lengthy sentence, the special counsel's office said Manafort's misconduct involved more than $16 million in unreported income resulting in more than $6 million in federal taxes owed, more than $55 million hidden in foreign bank accounts, and more than $25 million secured from financial institutions through lies resulting in a fraud loss of more than $6 million. Manafort's attorneys accused Mueller of attempting to vilify Mr. Manafort as a lifelong and irredeemable felon and claimed prosecutors had gone beyond the pale and grossly overstated the facts before the court. In court, they focused on what they believed to be the common nature of the crimes that Manafort had committed, pushing back on the idea that Manafort was a uniquely nefarious character. These are serious crimes. I understand that. No one is disputing that tax evasion isn't jaywalking, but it's also by no means narcotics trafficking. Dot explaining his decision, Ellis said that he was trying to treat this case like another tax evasion case might be handled. There's been a trend in the sentencing in these types of cases, and the sentences have been remarkably light. And I need to take that into account. 
to impose a sentence of 1924 years on Mr. Manafort would clearly be a disparity. In the end, I don't think the guidelines range is at all appropriate. Ellis said, this is not a mathematical calculation, it's a judgment. But it's a judgment guided by everything that has been raised. During Thursday's hearing, Ellis made it clear that his decision was about the fraud and financial crimes at hand and that Mr. Manafort is not before the court for any allegation that he or anybody under his direction collided with the Russian government in the 2016 campaign. Ellis did, however, remind the court that he'd previously ruled that the special counsel was authorized under the law to pursue this case. Manafort pleaded guilty in a separate case in Washington, D.C., on September 14, 2018 to two counts of conspiracy, including committing crimes against the United States and obstructing justice. Mueller's office later alleged that Manafort broke his plea agreement and Judge Amy Berman Jackson agreed 